There are signs of a second wave of the pandemic in parts of Europe, according to Boris Johnson, who's been defending his government's handling of the crisis and the sudden imposition of quarantine on travellers to the UK from every part of Spain. Now, the Spanish Prime Minister is among those criticising the decision. He said tourists in most regions of Spain are safer from coronavirus than they are in the UK. The Foreign Office is advising against all non-essential travel to Spain, including to the Balearic Islands and the Canary Islands. Well, Spain has seen a recent rise in the number of COVID-19 infections in some areas, with 47 cases per 100,000 people across the last two weeks. The UK, by comparison, has 15 cases per 100,000. France has a similar rate with 16 cases per 100,000. And Germany, despite official warnings of a spike in infections, is even lower with just nine cases per 100,000 people. We'll be reporting from Spain. We'll be asking what evidence there is of a second wave and looking at the possible alternatives to quarantine. But first, our transport correspondent Tom Burridge has the latest. A dose of Spanish sunshine out of reach for many, now that the UK government advises against all non-essential travel to the whole of Spain. Today, Jet2 scrapped its flights and holidays there over the next 12 days. Sam and Josh can't quarantine for two weeks when they get home, so their holidays to Spain are off. Since the new restrictions that have come in and the need to quarantine, uh, that just means you know, it's financially unviable for me to take an additional two weeks off of work unpaid. I've worked through the whole of lockdown and this, is good. this was like, you know, my little treat to myself. The confidence to travel is vital if more people are to holiday abroad this summer. But today the Prime Minister sounded the alarm about the situation in parts of Europe. Let's be absolutely clear about what's happening among some of our European friends. I'm afraid you are starting to see in some places the signs of a second wave of the pandemic. And we all remember what happened last time. It's absolutely vital, therefore, that we make the necessary preparations here in the UK. Warnings like that might help keep Ibiza's beaches empty. But the UK assessment of the risk of holidaying here is at odds with the view in Spain. The Spanish Prime Minister insisting places like Ibiza are safer than the UK. Take the Canary Islands, the Balearics, the regions of Valencia, Andalusia, where there is, I emphasise, a lower prevalence of the virus than in the UK. The companies normally taking huge numbers of Brits off to Spain at this time of year have been left perplexed. One boss told me they got no warning about the announcement as it dropped in the middle of a busy weekend. It's clear at EasyJet that it would be good for us to sit down with the government and have more structured and coherent conversations as to how we can handle some of that communication with our customers going forward because building confidence within, within our customers is really important. Travel agents like this one in Belfast had no customers for months. So trips to other destinations now even more vital for them. People are hesitant, but they are still going ahead with the travel. What we're noticing at the minute is there has been a decline in new bookings. But people who have booked are certainly keen enough still to travel to Croatia, Italy, France, are still going ahead as planned. But the warnings in Westminster echoed in Scotland about the risks of a trip abroad. If you are in a position uh, to have a holiday and, and want to take a holiday, uh, the safest way of doing so is to stay here in Scotland. Uh, so you avoid the risks of foreign travel, but you are also, as a, an added bonus, helping the Scottish tourist industry as well. To travel or not to travel, that is the question many are facing. For those still booked to Spain, there's no simple answer. Tom Burridge, BBC News. Well, the Spanish government has again insisted that Spain is a safe country for tourists. But as we said, the rate of new infections is continuing to rise in some areas. In the worst hit parts of the country, partial lockdowns are being reinstated. And in the capital, Madrid, the authorities have announced the compulsory wearing of face masks everywhere at all times. Well, let's join our Europe correspondent, Gavin Lee, in Barcelona for the latest tonight. 
It's been four days since Britain announced its quarantine rule and in that time there's been a noticeable difference on the ground. There are far fewer people arriving from flights from the UK and British resorts are much quieter. Spain is lobbying the British government to overturn the decision and here in Catalonia cases continue to rise. And we've been looking at some of the factors worsening the situation here. The call for the sick and the anxious at a COVID testing centre in the suburbs of Barcelona. Five weeks after the state of emergency was lifted here, cases are on the rise again. Albert Thomas is waiting his turn. His girlfriend tested positive this morning. Yeah, I work near to beach, so close to beach, and yeah, it's a lot of young people without masks, uh, drinking. Uh, it's close to close, face to face, and for me it's the problem. The young people don't understand how this COVID increase. Young Catalans have been blamed by the regional government for accelerating the spread, showing a lack of solidarity, ignoring the rules to socially distance. One of the nurses here, Rosea Morales, has worked throughout the pandemic and says the majority of cases now are people under 40. Yeah, there's a lot of asymptomatics that then become positive. You do the test and the test becomes positive. At this time, there's not that many acute symptoms that they need to be uh, hospitalised. Uh, it's more like mild symptoms like headaches, uh, loss of uh, smell, loss of taste. The Catalan government said the situation has reached a critical point, that if in the next 10 days COVID cases haven't reduced, There'll be a second lockdown in this city and with it, shutting down a vital industry that attracts millions of Brits each year, tourism. It's said there are more selfies taken in front of Gaudi's Sagrada Familia Basilica than anywhere else in Spain. Now there's barely enough business for the street sellers. The flights arriving from the UK today and not even half full. There must have been about 20 people maximum on the flight. My row in front of me, behind me, my row was empty. Debbie is on the way back to Cardiff, filling out an online COVID form ahead of a two-week quarantine. She says the decision has caused her a great deal of stress. I wish I hadn't come to Spain now. I wanted to come away and um, I wanted a holiday, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone had I known that there would be the self-isolating on my return. Hotels and resorts outside the city say they're working hard to reassure tourists that it's as safe as possible. But despite intense diplomatic efforts, British officials have shown no sign of changing course. Gavin Lee, BBC News, Barcelona. Well, the impact of the latest restrictions on travel to and from Spain has led to calls for tests to be conducted on people arriving in the UK as an alternative to quarantine. The government says it's looking at a range of options to manage the risk of people importing the disease. Our science editor, David Shukman, reports now. A sudden rise in coronavirus cases in Kosovo. All over Europe, there are local surges of new infections. But whether this amounts to a second wave is unclear. In Germany, an outbreak at a farm in Bavaria has led to a new warning. Numbers are still relatively low compared to many countries. Still, the authorities say they are very concerned. So German airports are offering testing for anyone arriving to see who has the virus, and this may become compulsory. The problem, though, is that the tests are not always reliable. What matters is how well they're carried out. Are they done by medical staff? Does the swab used in the test actually reach the virus in the throat or nose? It could miss an infected area. One study found that 20 to 25 per cent of people who are infected get a negative result. And then there's the problem of timing. If you become infected on holiday, let's call that day one, and then fly back a couple of days later, day three, and have a test at the airport on your return, you may well get a negative result because at that stage the virus is still incubating inside you. It may be day six or even later before you show any symptoms. And what scientists are worried about is people getting a negative result and thinking they're completely in the clear when in reality they're infected. I think a negative result um, at, at the airport does not mean you are uh, necessarily free of the infection. 
you might not yet be shedding the virus. And if you believe that you're free of infection and you go back to your normal life, very much the risk is that you can start spreading it to family, friends and work colleagues um, and thereby um, hasten the spread of uh, the virus generally in your home community. But screening at airports is becoming more common. China found a positive case last week. And one idea is to have a system of double testing, a week apart, to have a better chance of spotting who's infected. Heathrow Airport wants to start a trial. I can understand that uh, the jury is out at the moment on having a single test on arrival. Uh, not enough work has been done on that. And it may be that we need to have a test on arrival and maybe a test after five days or eight days to get people out of quarantine early. A passenger in South Korea. Regular testing may well allow more travel and minimise quarantine. But it's not exactly pleasant to have to go through. David Shrookman, BBC News.